is public server racing a complete waste of time? Now, despite public server racing being a little bit erratic, shall we say, and often more stressful than going in for a uh, open heart operation, I don't think public server racing is a waste of time. And I actually think you can learn a lot and get a lot of value from public server racing. Now, here we go. The, the first aspect of public server racing that I think is really valuable is the amount of training it gives you very immediately in becoming comfortable at driving around a track in amongst other cars, especially for newer drivers. Now, I say for newer drivers because as you get better at sim racing or better at a specific car and a specific track, um, you will find that you you know you do league racing or something like i racing or sim racing system and you're if you're within one and a half seconds or so of pace for that track you will be racing in amongst cars battling away anyway so it, would, it wouldn't really matter if you're on a public server or not but if you are new to a car and track or just new to sim racing in general if you join a league or i racing or one of those services you'll find that it's not that often that you're in amongst other cars and when you are it's only going to be for the first few laps of a race and then things spread out and it just turns into more lap on lap practice in short public server racing gives you a ridiculous and quite literal crash course in driving close to other vehicles somewhat following on from our first point as we get a porsche in our door that's miraculously stayed completely intact due to a set of courses uh, very strongly built vehicles I have to say is the because of the frequency of races and typically public server races are no longer than 10 laps you get a far higher frequency of race starts and situations where there's going to be accidents and because of that you get so many chances to see what happens to vehicles when they spin out of control, what drivers tend to do when they're trying to catch the vehicle as it's losing control, and then as a result of that, which direction you should go as a driver to avoid it, and if you know if you should put your brakes on or if you should just redirect your car slightly. Things that you can't really sort of preemptively read about to learn. But the a lot of the accidents that do happen in sim racing and real 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 world racing. It's not something that I think you can just say to someone, oh, you know, that car's spun over to the, the right, uh, go to the left, or he's gone to the left, go to the right. Th there's a sort of nuanced aspect to when people lose their con lose control of the cars and get into spins. There's so many types of spins and types of way that people lose their vehicle, which then define how you respond to that, that I think you can only really learn from, from practice. There's obviously generalized rules you can apply, like maybe try and slow down a little bit, check your mirror make sure no one's going to rear end you if you do break and generally go as wide as possible but those rules don't you can't really apply them to everything and it's only from practice that you get a a far higher likelihood that you're going to survive accidents and avoid accidents and again it's only really in public server racing where you get a ridiculous high frequency of accidents and a ridiculous high frequency of race starts and the fact that it's only a six to ten lap race, so it doesn't really matter if you you know make a mistake yourself again, you can you can just restart. So it's only in that context where you really get to practice and practice and practice that aspect of racing or, or not racing, just avoiding crashes. Point number three. Only in public server racing will you ever drive the variety of content. It's a simple fact that there's only so many leagues and uh, in our race and only so many cars that are particularly active and on public servers or in most simulators if you're willing to jump from sim to sim and uh, be <laughs> be a dirty sim racing whore with no dedication to a single sim if you're willing to jump from sim to sim you can't get that degree of variety from any other type of racing the result is if you do a lot of public server racing in these simulators you will get a greater experience of learning how to handle different cars, but also learning how each simulator does its nuanced methods of, of car handling, um, driving fast and in amongst other cars and catching those cars in the different simulators, which then gives you a, a more rounded approach to uh, being able to handle handle vehicles. My sort of view of, of different driving simulators is that I kind of a, a 
approach each driving simulator as if each sim itself is almost a different car because the, the variations in the tyre models, the force feedbacks and the actual core physics of each simulator are really as large as the differences that are found in each car in reality and then obviously inside of each simulator you then have different cars which have their own different rules and parameters associated with them. So it's only really with public server racing that you're going to, within a reasonable amount of time, be able to experience all this different content, uh, find out what you like, but also train different aspects of car control and uh, driving skills that you, you really are unlikely to be able to do in a, in a league context. Mostly because you won't have time to register for all these league races and get up to league pace in all these cars. Now, as a sort of uh, counterpoint to that, I think there is definitely value that value in learning a specific car, getting up to pace with it, and um, you know, getting up to a league pace or reasonable rank in iRacing with it, or high up on something like Sim Racing System. There, there is a value to that, and it's worthwhile doing. But the point is, you can't really do that with a lot of cars, unless uh, I go, I don't know, maybe you're like 13, or maybe you don't have a life and you uh, spend a lot of time producing YouTube videos. Most people don't have the time, so public server racing lets you actually drive, experience and learn lots of different vehicles in the context of a race that you just wouldn't otherwise get to do. Point four. Public server racing allows you to focus on just enjoying driving and, and racing in a sort of context where it's not, it doesn't matter if you really get crashed out ultimately it, it, it doesn't really matter you can't lie to yourself that your win of this race or you know it is really important to know oh, my, my race career my sim racing career you can't lie to yourself it's a public server it doesn't matter there's the it's just the you've got to enjoy the fun of the moment it forces you to focus on the intrinsic elements in my opinion of what make driving enjoyable and that's the how the cars are handling how you're responding to the way they're moving how you're responding to what's happening in the race and the context of that race it just forces you to, to enjoy it and play it as a game and to be clear that doesn't mean because it's a game you don't take it seriously or try your best or you know approach it with dedication that's uh, completely up to the, the, the given player as to how they want to play it. And I'm also not saying that league racing and higher ranked eye racing, you don't get better quality racing because it's a simple fact that people that have practiced more for a race and uh, have sort of bought into the whole sim racing career notion, they will be taking it in general more seriously, which as a result, of course, produces more competitive and generally if not nearly always, high quality racing. It's also just a simple fact that if you practice more for a specific event and that event is, you know, it's not something that's just always repeated, although it pretty much is, but, you know, if it's a sort of league event that you built up in your head or it's um, a, a, an event that you want to get a higher ranking on in iRacing or something, the fact that you've built it up and practiced for it makes it seem more important which then can make it more enjoyable because the tension will be greater and it seems as if it's got more meaning behind it which itself can be really enjoyable so you get positives and negatives with both i just think it's really easy to dismiss the golden nuggets that can be panned out of public servers and they are there the golden nuggets are there though you might you might get trench foot and um die from an infection due to standing in the uh, stream panning for gold too long but you know that's a risk you have to take and that's living life on the edge driving on public servers point number five public server racing is better than racing against ai now ai can be set up in a lot of simulators to be faster than your average public server racer and you can get really good quality from ai racing and there's there's definitely its own training value especially if you want to do longer races or just test out various strategies and things ai racing does have a place and i think it can be quite good at times but ai just aren't humans and i haven't played a single driving simulator where the ai has really sort of convinced me that it could be a could be a person and it's a problem in, in games in general. I mean, just about, I can't think of any game where the AI has really made me go, oh, 
<laughs> that could have been a person. I forgot it was a computer. It's always very obviously um, computer, a computer making computerized decisions. And that's because AI is a ridiculously complicated uh, computational problem. And it's just, uh, it's probably one of, if not the hardest problems. I mean, you think tire models are a tricky thing for developers to approach, or graphics engines. AI, or, or rather human like AI, is uh, outside of the solar, that's outside the universe in terms of difficulty to uh, have convincing AI in a, in a computer game that can run in real time and fool people. So, public servers really are the only place to go if you want to actually experience grow your e -peen. That's it. That's what it comes down to, realistically. You can't develop an e -peen against AI because they don't remember, they won't feel the impact of your e -peen when you overtake them. And that's what it comes down to. And public servers let you increase the girth, the rigidity and length of your e -peen, whereas AI don't. That, that's point number five. Though, truthfully, you just don't get the situations with AI that you do with people or, or the development of the e -peen. Lastly, ev everything I've said is a complete lie. Um, public server driving will completely drive you to despair and make you want to throw your sim rig out of the window, but unfortunately your sim rig doesn't fit out of your window because you've attached too much crap to it, because you've spent far too much on this, on this hobby, which is essentially gaming, a, a form of gaming which only two people are involved in, uh, a form of gaming that most people taking part in it are completely deluded as to thinking it will lead to something separate from the activity that you're partaking in, uh, it's the worst. It's literally the worst type of gaming you can get involved in. Just don't do it. Don't ever public server race, don't buy a steering wheel, don't league race, don't I race. Give up! Give, if you've got this far in the video, you, you're part of the problem, I'm afraid. That's uh, that's pretty much it, really. Um, I'm, 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 the sim rig's going in, in... Well, it can't go in the bin, and it won't fit out of the window. It won't fit in the bin. Really, uh, it's, sim racing is actually... It's pretty good fun. I, I can't think of any other game that sort of gives you the... You've got, they've got the haptic feedback from the steering wheel. It's nice real-world locations, you put your VR headset on, you're in another place, it's really relaxing, apart from, <laughs> apart from the crashes and the crazy stuff that happens, and uh, everything else involved in it, but no, it's a really, really good hobby. Uh, ultimately, I just, I hope this video was enjoyable. I wanted to, I just wanted to pr give, give uh, public server racing a, a shout-out, you know? I think people, people pick on public server racing, and it's not fair. Public servers have feelings too. Um, if you want to take part in some atrocious public server racing with us, you can click the uh, subscribe button, follow us on tw tw I was gonna say Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Twitch, social media. Just just follow us, drop us a comment, and uh, oh yeah, there's new YouTube ending stuff. I've stuck them on the screen. You can click on those as well. Take care, everyone. Don't die in your sleep, and uh, I'll see you in the next video we do. Well, well you're here. You won't, I won't see you because I can't see you, but you'll, you'll hear my voice. I guess that's, that's close enough. Goodbye.